I never met Martin Roth personally. I didn't have that pleasure. But of course, I was aware of his work and uh, of his uh, outstanding reputation and, uh, and also of his nonconformism and the capacity of thinking out of the box. And it's, uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here. I'd like to thank, of course, uh, the entire IFA uh, conveners team who suggested that I speak to, uh, to this subject. And of course, uh, I'd like, particularly like to thank uh, Andreas Görgen, who is convinced that the work that I do in Senegal is very close to the ideals that Martin Roth had dearly. Ladies and gentlemen, what can culture do? I think it is always an auspicious question that never loses its relevance at any given time. Even though many of us in this room are likely to believe that we live in a currently very difficult times, I believe that every generation can claim the same for its time, and the world has never been really great. The truth is that everything is better today than yesterday. However, today we are not sure anymore if things will really be better tomorrow. The work in the backdrop that you see is generally referred to as the obelisk, while its proper title is Das Fremdlinge und Flüchtlinge Monument, in other words, Monument for Foreigners and Refugees. The sculpture is by Nigerian artist and writer Olua Gwibe. It was produced in the context of Documenta 14 that was staged last year in Athens and Castle. It will serve as the visual background for my short presentation and input. It stands here as a memorial that it is. I am also showing it as a stand-in for the current debate that the work is generating in German society, and which for me pretty much, pretty much shows how culture can at times perform. In an era of incessant exposure to news feeds, unstoppable flow of visuality, political and religious turmoil, and increasingly invisible yet insidious and effective colonization by technology and artificial appropriation, we as humans are grossly assuming the conditions of a constant sounding board. I would like to put forth some ideas that concern me as a black African female thinking body of the 21st century. I'd like to discuss the causal realities and residual qualities of this perpetual loop via few theses that I believe aptly apply to every human condition. How do we draw our way ahead within a space that seems to be doomed for so many and prosperous for only a few? How do we compose our common future when narratives of form are formed through algorithms and biology is fictionalized and obliterated? How do we mobilize what is left of the idea of the social, let alone the idea of an ideal society, on the conditions of shrewd 
systematic dispossession and visceral toxic, toxic racism and sexism? How do we experience the sensitive and the sensual in the age of glory of the fake and augmented and virtual reality and second life, when the sensorial is more and more limited to the retinal? How do we produce critical material when material culture is constantly exposed to human greed and destruction and biodiversity has reached its utmost threshold of precarity? These are a set of questions that culture can help us answer. We could address them by looking at times that condition ourselves. I have told uh, single that two times. I think there is a time of feeling or the time of the tactile. A sense that is generally, totally undervalued. Touch. The body moves and shifts to the contours of history. An artist rupture, fragment, and distill the body in a sensorial space. The body is a process that seeps through our hands that forms alphabets, new languages. Its scale morphs and contorts until we are formless, bound by nothing else by earth and culture. And then we get to the ludic, the playtime. Technologies have fragmented us, but they have also reconstituted us. They create possibilities, openings, and fissures. These spaces, however, are open to tempering, suspension, surveillance, and of course, always the luring corruption. History is thus most elusive of things. It proclaims to account for our time, but it's marred at the very least contorted by the subjectivities of others. So, what can culture do? For culture to perform, one is obliged to recognize real relationality as its primary precondition. And, that, and in that, relation, relationality is based on trust and respect at every level, at every time, with everyone. I have the privilege of living in a country whose pacifist tradition materialized through a culture of dialogue and deep spiritual contempt and moral responsibility has spared it from the political convulsions and military operations that mined most post-independence post-independence nation states in Africa. By setting the priority on culture and education and devoting 40% of his national budget to these fields, President Senghor has done a great service to Senegal. It builds its reputation as a cultured country. It greatly contributed to forging a sense of self of many Senegalese and Africans at large. That is the power of culture. I strongly believe that one of the principal tenets of social theory is to study the relationships between people and institutions and the strategies and tactics to elaborate the discursive frameworks of social analysis. Changing the world, whether locally or globally, is the common aspiration of all forms of political and cultural action. 
The turn of the 21st century in Africa resembles in mood and determination the period of the early years of independence from colonial rule though without any recognizable or at least acceptable leading thinkers or political protagonists. The similarities lie not only in the general feeling of reawakening for a new beginning, expressed back in the late 1950s through the successes of the liberation movements that led to independence, and now stimulated by this prospect of an alleged imminent rise to prosperity, to an unprecedented economic boom. In contrast, to, in contrast to a contemporary Western Europe plagued by contemporary angst, there is a general feeling of promise and rebirth that is catalyzing societies in, um, in Africa. Despite, despite the recurrent setback caused by armed conflicts, pandemics, bad governance, and religious fundamentalism. Despite all that, there is no escape from shaping society. It somehow becomes clear to me that shaping a society is not primarily a matter of means, but rather a matter of attitude and mindset. Perhaps one of the most interesting developments in this framework is the emergence of contemporary art spaces in different major African cities in the past 20 years. Although the main difference between cultural spaces in Africa and those in Western societies might be the willingness and social urgency to subvert and question commonly held assumptions around the agency of artists. So in this respect, Raw Material Company, the organization that I founded 10 years ago, is committed to shifting the tensions between art and society. The center was established to provide a space for inquiry of the role of art in society and to create an environment that allowed the discussion of art beyond its material appearance, to look at art as a progressive system of societal transformation coupled with a staunch perspective of Africa as a global entity rather than a divided geographical cultural regions. Our philosoph philosophy is performing the revived Pan-African mood that is currently perceptible all over the continent. And that, I think, is what culture can do. Thank you. <laughs>